Good afternoon, everybody. Hello to you and welcome, welcome. It's a good morning for you uh, for Easter Sunday morning, but we are recording this Easter message for you this, uh, this Monday, Thursday, a couple of, couple of four days before Easter. But nonetheless, we're going to be talking about Easter to uh, produce this video for you to watch on Easter Sunday. So we will be uh, talking about the Easter story from the Gospel of St. John, we have some beautiful Easter hymns for you, and that we will consider the glorious event, the most important event to have ever occurred in human history, and that is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that is our purpose, and that's what we're doing here. I hope you enjoy it. I hope that this devotion, this video, is a blessing for you. So let me pray with you, and then we will begin. Lord God and Heavenly Father, Lord, we live in a godless world. We live in a world that is so full of those who see no purpose in the faith, who find what we believe and what we, what we say and how we live to be of no value. But Father, we know that. That's actually nothing new. That we who live by faith, we who have been blessed with saving faith, we celebrate today. This is Easter Sunday. It is the day that we celebrate and rejoice in the greatest event that has ever occurred in human history. And that is the resurrection of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that it is in His name that we worship you on this occasion, on this video. And I pray that it is a blessing for everybody who watches, that they may be strengthened in their faith, that we may believe and continue to trust in your glorious goodness, that you have given to us forgiveness from our sin, you have reconciled us to yourself, and that you have blessed us with eternal life. That in your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose resurrection we commemorate this Easter Sunday, that we proclaim as Christians have proclaimed throughout the centuries. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumph and holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss, Alleluia. Hymns of praise then let us sing, Alleluia. Unto Christ our heavenly King, Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave, Alleluia, sinners to redeem and save, Alleluia. But the pains which he endured, Alleluia, our salvation have procured, Alleluia. Now above the sky He's King, Alleluia. Where the angels ever sing, Alleluia. God above, Alleluia. Praise eternal as His love, Alleluia. Praise Him, all ye heavenly host, 
Hallelujah. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. Dear friends, let me turn in the Holy Scriptures, specifically to the Gospel of St. John. And I'm reading John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their own homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any... It is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Alleluia. The account of our Lord's resurrection that we just read, John chapter 20, in the Gospel of St. John, has as its dominant feature not only the actual events of our Lord's resurrection and how Mary Magdalene who went to the tomb and the other Gospels tell us that there were other women who went with her, that they were going on early Sunday morning, which was just the beginning of the work week in the Jewish week, and so they were going early in the morning to take care of a very morbid and difficult and yet necessary errand, and that is to bring their spices and their herbs and their ointments in order to prepare the body of Jesus for permanent burial. They had heard. Jesus had said several times, that he would be crucified, that he would die, and that he would rise again. And yet, as St. John says, they didn't understand. We don't blame them for that. That perhaps they were thinking that he would rise again in their hearts and in their minds, that it was a figure of speech, it was a metaphor that he was speaking. They had no idea that he really meant it, that he would actually, physically, bodily, rise and come alive again and emerge from his tomb. But that is exactly what happened. That is the glorious good news of Easter Sunday. It happened on Sunday. We worship as Christians on Sunday. Every Sunday is a little Easter to remind us of this, the highest festival, the highest event of all of Christendom, the resurrection of our Lord. Had there been no resurrection, there would be no salvation. There would be no hope for us. There would be no reason for us to live. But we have every reason to live. And why is that? Because we believe. All of the characters that we read about here and that we heard in John chapter 20 are those who believe. Mary Magdalene, who was at the tomb early in the morning, who didn't know how the stone was to be rolled away, and yet she found it already rolled away, and that the body of Jesus was gone. She ran to where the disciples were. She ran and told Peter and John that he's gone. So they ran, both of them running toward the tomb, and that it tells us here in the text very, very eloquently, and most importantly, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first, that's John, also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Now they see, now they know that he was actually literally telling them that he would rise, that he would come alive again. And even more so do we believe and the scriptures tell us that we too, you and I, will rise again and that we will live for all eternity with the Lord in eternal glory in heaven. Mary Magdalene, who continued to remain at the tomb, pondering, weeping, crying, processing all that had happened, and that she looks into the tomb herself and sees two angels asking her why she is weeping. Because all of her hopes, all of her anticipation that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, it seemed had been dashed, that she now was without any hope. But as she turned around and saw Jesus, didn't recognize him at first, but as he spoke her name and she recognized his voice, then she cried out and said, Rabbi, Rabboni, which means teacher, master, actually. She believed. She believed. She worshipped her Lord 
and that he assured her that she was seeing and believing that it really was him. That Easter night, Sunday night of Easter, the ten disciples who were gathered, Judas was gone, he had betrayed Jesus, Thomas that we read in the text is not with them, and so as they're in a locked room, Jesus simply appears to them, and he says to them, peace be with you, and then shows them his hands and his side, and they cry out, and it says here in the text that they were glad to see the Lord. Thomas came the following Sunday, eight days later, because the other disciples had said to him, we've seen the Lord. And so he says to himself and to them, if I don't see the nail prints in his hands, if I don't put my hand in his side, the injury to his side where the Roman soldier pierced his side with a spear, he says and declares vehemently, I will never believe. So the next week, the next Sunday, Thomas is with them and Jesus appears to them again and says to Thomas, comes to him and says, put your hands in my nail prints, look at my hands, put your hand in my side, see that it is I. And Thomas then also cries out and says, my God, my God, my Lord and my God. He too believed. Jesus said to him, stop believing, stop, don't disbelieve, but believe. And he does, because when Jesus speaks, that's what happens. And then finally, finally, in summation to the entire chapter, as we have considered Peter and John, who saw the tomb empty, and then they saw the Lord twice. They would see Him again on other occasions. They believed. Mary Magdalene believed. Thomas believed. And now St. John speaks to you and I. He transcends 2,000 plus years. And for everybody who would read this account, this account of our Lord's resurrection in John chapter 20, now He is addressing you, we, together and says that Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, and I'd love to know what those are which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you, you dear friends, not in the first century, but in the 21st century, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. You do believe. You're celebrating Easter. You believe because you know that just as Jesus said He would rise again, that He did rise again. These events are factually and historically true. Again, we don't believe in just some fanciful fairy tale. We believe in historical truth. The tomb was empty. Jesus was alive. And that He's alive today. And because he is alive, so dear friends, you are alive, both in this life here on earth and in eternal life, in eternal glory with our Lord for all eternity. We've been baptized, and with baptism comes faith, and with faith comes that wonderful good news that as we celebrate Easter Sunday, again, the greatest feast of all of Christendom, that it isn't just that we marvel at the story, but that through it and by it, the fact that the Lord Jesus who lived, who died, and who rose again, has accomplished and effected our salvation. That's wonderful good news. That's Easter. That's what we celebrate today. And I pray that your celebration, that your prayers, that your meditation, your worship, may be enriched by that wonderful good news that as St. John, who made sure to write down in his gospel what Jesus said and did, gives us the reason why he wrote his gospel. So that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name.
The Gospel of John, as well as all of the Gospels, as well as really the entirety of Scripture, is given to us, is given to all of humankind, so that we may read, we may hear, and in the wonderful technology that we may watch and believe. Believe that all of this is true. It actually happened. And not just that it actually happened, but for what it means. That we are now, we are now right with God. We are reconciled with God. We are forgiven. Our sins were nailed to the cross with Jesus. Our sins have been washed away in our baptism. And that we, need, we now live as resurrection people today. For that we will join Jesus in our own resurrection. And that is glorious good news. That is the truth. That is what we celebrate this Easter. And so as we declare, as Christians have declared throughout centuries, so today for Easter Sunday, we say, as Christians have always said, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen and amen. A most blessed and happy and joyous, joyous Easter to you and those who you love, dear friends, in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now all the vault of heaven resounds In praise of love that still abounds Christ has triumphed He is living Sing choirs of angels loud and clear Repeat their song of glory here Christ has triumphed Christ has triumphed Alleluia 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 Eternal is the gift He brings Therefore our heart with rapture sings Christ has triumphed He is living now still He comes to give us life And by His presence stills all strife Christ has triumphed, He is living Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia Fill us, Lord, with dauntless love Set heart and will on things above That we conquer through your triumph Grant grace sufficient for life's day That by our lives we truly say Christ has triumphed he is living. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Adoring praises now we bring. And with the heavenly blessed sing Christ has triumphed, Alleluia Be to the Father and our Lord To Spirit blessed most holy God All the glory never ending Alleluia, Alleluia Hallelujah.